morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on what is one of our favorite days, uh, a day we can welcome a new business to our great city. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our mayor, Rick Kreisman. Good morning, everyone. These are the kind of days that we really love here in St. Petersburg, and as we like to say, when the sun is really, truly shining on us here in the city, when we get to welcome a new business to our community and a business who's really dedicated uh, not only to doing business in our community, but being a part of our community. And that means so much to us here in St. Petersburg. We're so proud to have you all here with us and, and opening here on uh, beautiful 4th Street. We hope everyone comes down and enjoys some of this incredible baked goods that you've got here, which I feel like just watching and looking at the food, I'm gaining weight, but it's, it's, right, it's a good way. Right Absolutely. Uh, but you know, as, as I say, it's, it's, it's equally important to have businesses who not only are a part of the community, but give back to the community. And I'm so thankful to Michael and your entire staff for your commitment to being a part of this community and really giving back. He was, we were talking a little bit uh, earlier and he was telling me about the, the, the culinary school that he has here where he's teaching people uh, how to do what he what what is his passion so that they can go out and live their passion and and that's really what it's all about so this is a great day we are so proud to be here and so thankful for you for opening your business here in St. Petersburg and we want to welcome you uh, to a city where our motto is we not only want our businesses to survive but we want them to thrive and we want to do everything that we can to help you be successful so we are looking forward to cutting the ribbon and uh, tasting some of your wonderful baked goods and thank you so much for being a great part of this community. Thank Michael. You, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. What would you like me to say? Whatever you want to say. No. Okay. No, no. Good morning. Uh, I would, what I'd like to say is I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be in this town. My, my Nancy and I have lived in this town for 14 years, trying seriously to find a location. And boy, there isn't any better than this one. And we finally landed it. And, we brought all of our commodities and talents here, and we do like to teach young people. We do like to create an ambiance of quality, and, and, and we take care of, of, of the needs of people because I've been doing this for 47 years in many places in the world, not only in the United States, and I've been able to capture a lot of different cultures. And so if people live here from France or Germany or Spain or England, I can do pastries from there from their culture, and that makes me quite happy to be able to do that. And the American people that used to get what they used to get and can't get anymore. So we want to bring that back, everything made from scratch, items that they haven't seen for years, because this has been, been my passion. And I'm really honored and happy to be in this town, and I hope we get supported so that we can thrive, as the mayor says. Thank you for your time. <laughs>
excited to be here for the Blue 2014 edition in our uh, new lovely venue. Um, what do you guys think of St. Petersburg as a place for Blue? You know, we keep uh, uh, making it a little bit hard of, you know, we want to find that right place because we feel like we're a convergence of arts and sciences and we want to bring together people to be inspired by the films, by the, the visual media, the, the photography, the arts, but also the science. And the science is core and very fundamental. And this is a great place that has strong ties to both and great partners in both. We found lots of cooperation and collaborations here. And we're just really excited about what's coming together this week. I think you'll notice outside we had a beautiful sand sculpture that's 60 tons of sand that's been crafted. And thanks to the Glasses Life team, and who is probably here in the crowd, but we want to thank them. Also, if you haven't had a chance, stop out in the lobby and look at the round sphere. And imagine being in that, dropping seven miles to the bottom of the ocean. And that's what Jim Cameron, that was exactly the size, that's the simulator that he was in. So if you can only imagine not only taking that risk and doing that, uh, in that kind of, you know, fetal position, pretty more or less. You know, so maybe that's why they did it that way. But, um, and we're also excited to have, uh, we're also Excited to have the Newt suit from the, the Newt Co. Company, Bill Newton, who is one of our Legacy Award winners this year. And so that's an ama some amazing technology. And exploration is one of those things that it ties into all we do because we must understand the ocean in order to protect it. And we must protect it in order to have a happy, healthy humanity and a happy planet because it is core to our life support systems. So and I think that uh, it's something that exploration, because it's hard, because it's not seen readily, we are dependent on the films, the films you'll see this week. And these, these heroes, these are true heroes that have been doing these explorations, these expeditions, and we could not be more thrilled to have the team from the uh, Deep Sea Challenge here with us, and we just feel very honored to have them. Um, we, uh, we want you to have a great time this week. That's kind of core to everything that we do. We want you to enjoy the films, be provoked and inspired by the talks. We want you to learn to become aware. We want you to leave motivated and feel like you too can play a role in us being good stewards of our planet because each and every one of us can make a difference. Where we become, where our planet is now is just the result of each and every one of us being a part of that. And we, we like droplets of the wave that comes ashore. One droplet alone is not very strong, but put it together, it's a powerful, powerful force. And that's what we are as a community, as a global community. We want to uh, thank, first of all, I have one person I just especially have to thank. Uh, and, and there's so many people who've been really critical to this coming together. But there was one person who was just tirelessly making this happen, and that was Dr. Peter Betzer. And I would just like to thank Of, and bringing together all the different uh, groups and bringing the city on board and and it really was what made the difference in this where we had not even this had not even been on the radar to be what we feel like is a great place for us to grow and be a signature event for the community we're here our headquarters will be here uh, as many of you know we'll alternate between st. Pete and Monaco every other year but we find that we will, we're here year-round. We'll be having ongoing programs, special screenings. So we're not going away. You're going to see lots of us. Uh, and, but we're just delighted you could be here. Please take advantage of the full week. I mean, that some of these uh, people, the speakers are here. It's once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet some of these amazing people, visionaries, uh, courageous people. So I hope you will take that time to spend some time with them and because they're very approachable and they do want to be an inspiration and want to mentor us all. I would like to next uh, introduce someone who was very, very encouraging and very receptive and 
is a great partner in all that we do. And I feel that delighted that the, the, the mentality is in sync of what we want to do. And not only for this year, but for many years to come and how we together can make St. Petersburg a showcase community for stewardship of the planet, stewardship of our ocean, engaging all the different aspects of the community, arts, sciences, economics, uh, policy, all those things bringing that together. So it's very much my pleasure to introduce Mayor Kreisman. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. First off, I'd like to welcome everyone here to St. Petersburg. We are very pleased to have you here. Thank you, Deborah. You know, in St. Petersburg, we like to pride ourselves on, on our cultural arts, having been named by the New York Times as one of the 52 places to visit in the world, having recently been written about by the Boston Globe. But equally important, uh, we like to pride ourselves on our focus on marine sciences being a, a city on the water. Uh, and having uh, Florida Institute of Oceanography, USF St. Pete Marine Sciences, Eckerd College Marine Sciences, uh, the Fish and Wildlife, NOAA, and the list goes on. So having this event here in St. Petersburg, we feel is a great fit, and we are so honored and pleased to have you all with us today. We hope you enjoy your time here in St. Petersburg. Uh, visit our incredible museums and galleries if you have a few moments in between uh, the programs and the movies. Uh, and again, we hope you enjoy your time and go blue. Next, I would love to introduce someone who uh, was very, very receptive and welcoming to us coming here and was very excited about Blue being here and what it could do for the community, but also on a national scale about raising awareness of policy and how personal it is to all of us. And she's just a wonderful advocate for the community, the community health, uh, environmental stewardship. It's very much my pleasure to introduce Congresswoman Kathy Castor. here you know uh, what a special place that this is. I want to thank Debbie and Charlie Kinder for bringing the Blue Ocean Film Festival to St. Petersburg. We're going to make you proud and it's only going to grow and grow every year. And we are very fortunate to have a mayor that reflects our values and the hopes of the future in Mayor Rick Kreisman. Rick, thank you for everything that you do to make this such a fabulous, fabulous a force of nature in these parts for many, many years. And Peter, I also want to thank you for your energy in really turning the Marine Science District into what, had, what it has become today. And I think we're only getting started. And of course, welcome uh, to uh, John Bruno and uh, James Cameron and everyone with the Deep Sea Challenge team. We're excited and grateful to have you here. And speaking of grateful, I think we only have to reflect upon what is going on at the University of South Florida St. Pete uh, in marine science uh, to understand the importance of ocean st stewardship all across the globe. Think back to April 20th, 2010, when the BP Deepwater Horizon exploded in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Eleven lives were lost. 210 million gallons of oil spewed into our beautiful Gulf of Mexico in one of the most productive ecosystems in the entire world. Who was it that responded? Yes, it was some of the federal agencies. Uh, they were on task. But weren't you proud that it was the USF St. Pete scientists that were first on the scene in the weather sensation because he could explain the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico and thank God there was the eddy that developed on the western side and we could 
breathe a little bit easier knowing that the oil would be trapped in that loop current and wouldn't come onto the shores of Florida. Now, the Panhandle beaches and Alabama and Louisiana were not, were not as fortunate. But then it was uh, Dr. David Hollander from USF St. Pete who insisted that BP provide the chemical fingerprint of the oil uh, to match uh, the, the other oil samples that is the evidence that confirms that it was oil from the well, the Maconda well, that was showing up on the, on the beaches and in the coastal march, marshes of Louisiana. Uh, after the BP Deepwater Horizon blowout and USF St. Pete's response and their visits on Capitol Hill and, and Tony Hayward from BP coming before my committee, we, we tried to hold his feet to the fire. Uh, the, we had the uh, Federal Oil Spill uh, Commission report. Unfortunately, the United States Congress did not adopt any of the recommendations in that report. So let that be uh, a message that should go forth to all policymakers. Uh, but what did happen is the Congress did respond and passed the Restore Act that will devote 80% of all fines and penalties under the Clean Water Act to restoration of the Gulf Coast. In that legislation, in the Restore Act, it designates a center of excellence for marine science and ocean research here at USF St. Pete. We are going to be the foremost research institution, along with the other institutions in Florida, under the umbrella of the Florida Institute of Oceanography, that will continue to bring the Gulf back to what it was better than what it was before. It's going to be a long road, and all of us have got to be a part of it. That's why I'm grateful that we're able to highlight, uh, through science and technology and film, uh, the importance of ocean stewardship. I hope this is an inspirational week for all of you. We should be grateful to the kinders, to the board of the film festival, uh, but mostly to all of you that are going to learn so much this week and turn it around and put it to good use. Be leaders in your own regard for stewardship of the oceans, our beautiful environment. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here in St. Petersburg, and I'm so enthusiastic optimistic with the leadership, your elected leaders here, and the support that they show for the ocean and exploration. And I'm thrilled to share with you tonight the Deep Sea Challenge 3D. And I hope you get the opportunity to meet some of our team members here, and all of whom had far more, probably 99.9% .9 more to do with this film and the, the successful dive of James Cameron back in March of 2012 than I ever did. But I will say that the experience being on the ship was unlike any I've ever had as a scientist. I'm a marine geologist, and I spend my time on ships exploring the ocean. I want to learn more about what's underneath the water. What can't we see? What are we missing? We only explore 5% of our ocean. And our ocean is our life support. How can we possibly continue on if we don't understand how the ocean works? We're using up our land resources. And at this time, more than ever, we need to understand what's happening in our oceans. So we've now taken scientists, we had three of the best and brightest. We had a geologist, Patty Fryer, we had a microbiologist, Doug Bartlett, and we had a planetary scientist, Kevin Hand on board, the best scientists. And we took some of the best engineers and technologists that Jim had put together. He has an app putting together wonderful teams of people who work well together. And they decided they were going to join together, commit themselves, and they were going to build a submersible that was going to take them to the deepest depths of our ocean, seven miles down. That's seven Grand Canyons stacked on top of each other, 25 entire state buildings. But wait, we're not done. We've got scientists, we've got engineers and technologists. Now we're going to film it, and we're going to film it well. It's not going to, it's a James Cameron uh, film. He's in the movie, but he didn't direct the movie. For that, we have John Bruno to thank. And I'd like to introduce him. John has a history of combining both Hollywood films, as we know them, The Abyss of One, for which he won an Academy Award, uh, True Lies, Terminator 2, the list goes on. But he's also filmed documentaries. He was a part of uh, Aliens of the Deep, which he filmed, uh, he had, or, sorry, Ghost of the Abyss, which he had the opportunity to dive on the Titanic, I believe four or five times, both leading up to the film Titanic, but also Ghost of the Abyss, which was the documentary version. And he was also a part of the recording of 
the sinking of the USS Vandenberg off of Key West uh, not many years ago. He knew they were going to sink the ship, and he thought, well, wait a minute, let's record this. So he's really married the two, uh, the two filmmaking efforts between documentary and what we're doing in science and the oceans, along with uh, Hollywood films. And this, I think, the product, BBC Challenge, captures that very well. So it's with great pleasure that I introduce John Moran. Thank you, everyone. I want to thank the uh, city of St. Petersburg for uh, allowing such an event uh, and the Blue Ocean Film Festival. Um, I'm going to make this short because the, the film's uh, 90 minutes edited down from uh, 1,200 hours of 3D footage, which is like 6 million feet of film. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's about, I think the film's about character and tenacity. Uh, it took seven years, seven years of, of planning and making. Um, and uh, there was there were two of the directors involved. In the beginning, there's uh, Andrew White, who was the producer of the film, who wrote a, a, a script that we sort of followed. Um, and uh, another fellow, Ray Quint, who you'll see credit uh, in post production, this film took so long. I mean, I was basically the director of the uh, of the expedition, got all the footage out at sea. Um, it's an amazing film, an amazing testament to one man, James Cameron. I got involved in the uh, Deep Sea Challenge, I think it was around 1993, when uh, Jim Cameron invited me to come down to his uh, organization in Malibu, California, and he said, you know, I've got this idea to uh, build two manned submersibles that will go to the deepest place in the ocean, one person subs, uh, and uh, would you be interested? And I said, yeah, of course, I've been there, done that and bought the t-shirt because, of course, this was my deep submersible in 1960, you know, half, more than half a century ago. So over the years, we've, as I say, crossed paths, and so it was a delight for me to uh, be witness to history because God knows, uh, uh, 50 years after I did the deepest dive in the ocean, nobody went near there. There was no capability in the world. And all of a sudden, here comes this new enterprise, very interesting engineering, very clever.